Now, respiration is a process of breakdown of food to release energy. And it happens via two mechanisms. One is the aerobic and second is anaerobic. Aerobic, as the name suggests, air. So it happens in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic takes place in the absence of oxygen. Aerobic releases more food, as uh, more energy as the food is completely broken down. Anaerobic releases less energy as the food is not completely broken down. Aerobic respiration takes place in mitochondria and it is the opposite of the photosynthesis, whereas the anaerobic respiration Respiration takes place in this cytoplasm. Now you should know the word equation for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So for the aerobic respiration, it's the opposite of photosynthesis. So glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water. So C6H12O6 plus 6 oxygen gives 6 CO2 and 6 water. For anaerobic respiration, there are two types, one in plants and animals. The anaerobic respiration in plant is fermentation, whereas glucose breaks down to form ethanol and carbon dioxide. And this is a very important process that takes place industrially to produce alcohol from yeast. So we take yeast and we give it the glucose and the yeast has the enzyme which converts glucose into ethanol. The second importance for this reaction is it produces carbon dioxide which is baker's friend. So yeast is known as baker's friend because we take yeast, yeast converts all the sugar and makes carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide rises and makes the dough soft. Whereas in animals, the anaerobic respiration takes place in muscles where glucose is converted into lactic acid. So you should know the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration you should know the equations of all of them and what is the difference in anaerobic respiration in plants and animals okay so i hope this is clear to you now most of the time students confuse and say breathing and respiration is the same but that's not right breathing is a physical process breathing involves no chemical reaction it's just taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide whereas respiration is using this oxygen combining it with the product of digestion which is glucose so it is a reaction between glucose and oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water whereas breathing is just taking in oxygen and giving off carbon dioxide breathing does not involve enzymes respiration do involve enzyme breathing is a physical process respiration is a chemical process breathing releases no energy respiration is an exothermic process it releases energy breathing takes place outside the cell respiration is a reaction that takes place within the cell now if you remember we just did that photosynthesis is endothermic so Respiration is exothermic. Exothermic means the energy release in making carbon dioxide and water is more than the energy taken in to break glucose and oxygen. Now, I hope you remember the site of respiration, that is mitochondria. Now, if you see the inner membrane of the mitochondria is folded. Now, these folding is known as cristae. Cristae are the folding of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. They increase the surface area for the attachment of enzyme. Therefore, mitochondria is well adapted to carry out respiration. Okay. Now, the question is, what is the importance of respiration? Why do we need energy? Now, we need energy for these reasons. We need energy for movement. We need energy for transport of substances. We need energy to maintain the body temperature. We need energy to do catabolism. Catabolism is breaking down reactions of the body. We need energy for anabolism. Anabolism is making bigger molecules in the body. So we need energy for the muscles to contract because when the muscles will contract, then only we'll be allowed to move. So muscle cells are responsible for movement and they are well adapted to do respiration therefore they have loads of mitochondria and they also store glycogen which is the fuel for respiration next is for transport you know that for active transport we need energy because it is a movement of substances against the concentration gradient so we need energy for the transport via active transport now if you remember respiration produces heat so if we need to uh, maintain a higher body temperature the respiration rate has to increase so thermoregulation that is respiration produces heat to maintain the body temperature we need energy we need energy for digestion 
We need energy to break down carbohydrates into sugars, proteins into amino acids, fats into fatty acids and cholesterol. On the other hand, we need anabolism. We need the glucose to be converted into cellulose uh, in the plants. The energy is needed to convert glucose into glycogen into animals. The energy is needed to convert glucose into protein, fats, lipids, and oil. So for all these processes, we need energy. This question can come in the exam. What are the various ways in which the body uses energy? So you should remember all these factors. Okay. Next is a very important concept. What changes do you see in your body when you exercise? Now remember, whenever you exercise, the demand for two things suddenly increases in your body. This is the demand of oxygen and the demand of glucose because we need energy and glucose and oxygen are the raw materials for energy. So for having more oxygen, Definitely, where do we get it? By breathing. So your breathing rate increases. So the breathing rate increases so that more excision is inhaled to meet the demands of the oxygen by the muscles. On the other hand, when you're exercising a lot, as your respiration rate increases, the carbon dioxide is built up at a greater rate in your cells. So that also needs to be expelled out of the body. And that again happens via increase in breathing rate. Next is the glucose is transported into the body via blood okay and the blood is pumped by a heart so to in meet the increase uh, demand for increasing glucose your heart rate increases it pumps more blood to the muscles increases blood supply increases the supply of both glucose and oxygens via blood to a muscle cell okay and your body stores excess glucose as glycogen so as the demand for glucose increases the glycogen needs to be broken down back into the glucose and this process is known as glycogenolysis so the glycogen breakdown happens and that breaks down happens into your cells in the liver cells to convert the lactic acid back into the glucose uh, the glycogen, sorry, back into the glucose. So that happens in your muscles. The glycogen, excess glycogen gets converted into glucose. Okay. Now, have you ever seen that even after you have exercised, you have stopped exercise, your breathing rate is still high? What is the reason for that? Now, the reason for that is during exercise, due to less demand, uh, less uh, availability of oxygen, the body switches to anaerobic respiration. Now, if you remember, the anaerobic respiration in animals converts glucose into the lactic acid. Now, this lactic acid, when developed in greater quantity, can cause muscle fatigue, redness, swollenness of the body. But this lactic acid cannot be stored. It needs to be broken down back into carbon dioxide and water with oxygen so your body has a depth of oxygen that even after you have stopped exercising your body breathing rate will continue to high until this lactic acid gets broken down into carbon dioxide and water so this is what happens after exercise the oxygen depth which is the extra oxygen needed by the body after the exercise to recover is the oxygen needed to break down lactic acid into carbon dioxide and water and this is why your breathing rate increases until all the lactic acid is broken down back into carbon dioxide and water so make sure you remember this phenomenon of oxygen depth now what is metabolism metabolism is the sum of all the reactions of the body and we can categorize the metabolism into two categories catabolism is the breakdown reactions of the body where breakdown of glycogens proteins lipids respiration that are all breakdown reaction anabolism is the synthesis reaction in which the bigger molecule is formed from the smaller ones which is the synthesis of cellulose starch and glycogen synthesis of fats and oil synthesis of proteins Okay, now the last thing we need to do liver. Why we are studying liver? Because liver is a very important organ involved in metabolism. It is doing a lot of synthesis and the breakdown reaction. Now it is involved in detoxification, breakdown of the blood cells, breakdown of the lactic acid, and the breakdown of the harmful substances for excretion. So when we take an excess alcohol, that is broken down by your liver. When uh, the blood cells are old, they are worn out, they are broken down in the liver. The lactic acid that is produced by anaerobic respiration, they are they, that, that is also converted into carbon dioxide and water by liver. And that is the oxygen depth. And uh, the harmful protein, the proteins cannot be stored in the body. So it is the liver that converts it into urea, which is excreted by the kidney as urine. Okay. So I hope you will remember all the functions of the liver. Okay, so now in this topic, just to summarize, we did 
what is photosynthesis and respiration and this is the difference between photosynthesis and respiration photosynthesis takes place only in plant cell respiration occurs in all living cell photosynthesis is endothermic respiration is exothermic in photosynthesis oxygen is produced in respiration oxygen is used up photosynthesis takes place in chloroplast respiration takes place in mitochondria or if it is anaerobic respiration that will take in the cytoplasm of the cell the photosynthesis is an anabolic reaction where glucose is made respiration is a catabolic reaction where glucose is broken down photosynthesis is dependent on light respiration is not that light dependent okay so i hope this topic is clear to you now this is the time to test yourself to see if you remember the key terms that we did in this topic we talked about photosynthesis which is the process by which green plants prepare their own food respiration breakdown of food to release energy limiting factors is the factor that limits the rate of photosynthesis endothermic reaction is the reaction that takes in heat exothermic reaction is a reaction that releases heat glucose is a product of photosynthesis and fuel for respiration starch is a storage carbohydrates in plants glycogen is a storage carbohydrates in animals aerobic respiration is the breakdown of food in presence of oxygen anaerobic is the breakdown of food in absence of oxygen in fermentation anaerobic respiration in plants that produces ethanol and carbon dioxide greenhouse is a glass or a plastic house to control the limiting factor and increase the rate of photosynthesis metabolism is the sum of all catabolic and anabolic reactions of the body liver is an organ involved in the metabolism lactic acid is a product of anaerobic respiration in animals and oxygen depth is the extra oxygen needed after exercise to break down lactic acid and rec and recover from up to the pre exercise stage okay so i hope all these uh, topics and all these terms are clear to you now as i always stress the next step is to check the specification to make sure whatever mentioned in the specification you understand that well and you have to do exam questions on this topic which you can find on my website so i hope you like this video if you like this video then do not forget to like comment and share this video and do not forget to click on the bell icon at the bottom so that you get the notification as soon as i put another video and i promise you i'll be putting a loads of helpful videos before your exam which you'll find really helpful for your exams and if there's any specific topic you want me to make a video on just leave a comment below and i'll make sure i put that up before your exam if you still have any doubts with any of this concept or any problem in science during your exam then you can come to my website on my website we have a 24/7 chat support where you can put all your queries and get instant reply okay so please go over this topic very very seriously because it's a very important topic and there are many questions that are asked in the exam so i'll see you next in the next video till then happy revising